this is Tasha Bagley saying good morning. We are so happy to be able to worship with you today. I, hi, I'm Caitlin. Hi, I'm Zaire. Zaire is recording, and we are so happy. And look, I'm breathing well, guys. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning from, from the villages. We miss you guys. Los extrañamos. Pasen buen día. Hi, we're the Evans family. Hello. Guys, count to three in your head and oh. then sit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to position. I'm here. Three, two, one. No, no, no. Think. I'm marking the video so I know where to cut it. Okay, so three, two, one. Gosh. <laughs> From, from Team, Team Evans. Evans. Bring it in, guys. One, One two, two, three. Happy Sunday! Good morning, Good morning church from the oh. Whipping Cots. We have a busy household oh. here. <laughs> Hope we get to see you soon. Bye! Love you. Sunday. Yeah, I can't see you. You can see me. I wish. Oh my gosh. I wish so much so I could see you. Uh, I miss I miss seeing the, the church. I miss Mercer. My goodness. Um, but uh, I am grateful to be able to share the communion message today. Uh, today, just so we know, we're going to be talking about pain. Trigger alert. All right. We're talking about pain. We're talking about how do we persevere uh, and how the cross leads us and exemplifies uh, the endurance that we need to have uh, as we do this and live out this Christian walk through these difficult times that we find ourselves in. Uh, you can start turning in your Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, but as you turn, or 2 Corinthians, but as you turn there, I really want to talk about this concept of pain and how God uses it to create in us a strength that we're going to need for a later time. Um, in 2 Corinthians, you know, we we see Paul, he's, he's writing this. And Paul, I mean, if there's anyone that we say we want to emulate outside of Jesus, I mean, Jesus is the goal, he's the standard, that's who we're pursuing. But outside of the, the God-man that we see in Jesus, fully divine, fully human, we see a fully human <laughs> man in Paul, right? And he is like the example of, uh, wow, this, if you want to live this Christian life out, Paul's the guy. That's the guy that we want to be like. We want to shine like Paul set the bar for Christians, for all Christians, right? And um, I think we, we see all the great things Paul did, but we can't forget how he got there. And Paul shares with us some things in 2 Corinthians verse chapter 1, starting in verse 8. He says, we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters. Don't get it twisted. Like, you know what I mean? About the troubles that we are experienced, we have experienced in the province of Asia. We are under great pressure, far beyond our ability to uh, endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but rely on God who raised Jesus from the dead. Pain, weakness, and difficult times, man, it produces something in us. Pain, weakness, and difficult times will always create something in us. But when we read this scripture here, Paul says clearly, pain, weakness, and difficult times created in him and taught him to rely on God, right? He goes on in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. He says, we are hard pressed on every side, 
but not crushed, perplexed, but not despaired, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body, may be revealed in our bodies. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal bodies. Again, he's saying the trials, the struggles, the weaknesses, the difficult circumstances we find ourselves in as disciples, as Christians, is so that the glory of God, the glory of the resurrection of the Savior that we worship, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday, that resurrection may be revealed in our perseverance. So it's essential that we understand the power of our perseverance in the midst of trials, weaknesses, and pain. Afflicted, persecuted, crushed, struck down, but you're not destroyed. You're still here. That was the life of Paul. But he goes on, right? Chapter 6, verse 4, he says, Rather as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance and troubles, hardships and distress, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger. And if that wasn't enough, chapter 11, 23, he says, are, 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 are they servants of Christ? And now he, he goes in, he's about to stunt real quick, he's stunting on them real quick, and he knows he's kind of maybe saying something a little out there, because he says, I am out of my mind to talk like this, but I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I've been beaten with rods, and once I was pleaded with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent nights and the night and the day in the open sea. I have been consistently on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, and in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, and in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled. I have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst. I have often gone without food. I have been cold. I have been naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin and I do not inwardly burn? Man, Jesus was, I mean, Paul was laying it down here. I know struggle. I know difficult times. I know hard circumstances. I know this life on this rock ain't easy. But I still got a calling. It's like I shared last week when Jesus rebuked Peter. He says, you do not have the concerns of God in mind. You have the concerns of man, human, earthly concerns. I love what Paul said here. He's like, man. My concerns are for the church. I'm concerned about the people. I'm thinking about the people in the midst of all that. My concern isn't avoiding all that. My concern is the church. Worried about the people. This is huge. Paul sets the standard for us. He sets a standard for us. You know, I had to ask myself, I still want to be like Paul? After <laughs> reading all that? <laughs> you know, he knew firsthand what it felt like to be misunderstood, mistreated, forgotten, abused, shipwrecked, attacked, starving, imprisoned, left for dead. He knew about hard times and difficult circumstances. Man, if there's anyone that we could read about right now to try to find some light in the midst of all this that we're going through, it's Paul. If there's anyone that we could read about to help us chill... Bring it back down as disciples again, as Christians. To bring it back down and have a faithful perspective in all this is Paul, right? He could have both, and it's crazy. He's talking about, like, if I wanted to boast about something, 
comparing himself to the other apostles. If I wanted to boast about something, he could have been like, you know, let me boast. Let me talk about all the church I planted, all the people I converted, all the letters I've written. You know what I mean? All this. Let me, let me, let me show you all these great things that I've done. And this is extraordinary to me about Paul because rather than boasting about his strengths, he decided to boast about his weaknesses. Why? Why boast about your weaknesses when you've accomplished so much? Because those accomplishments don't reflect the glory of God. It's how he accomplished those things in spite of reflects the glory of God. That is powerful. What did you do in the midst of the pandemic, Christian? What did you do in the midst of the trials, disciple? I mean, everything was working against you. How could you produce something beautiful in all this darkness? What does that look like? Is that even real? Can we do that? That's what makes what Paul did so powerful. In the midst of all of that, he produced something beautiful. He produced something that 2,000 plus years later we're reading today. 2020, pandemic, we're reading the words of Paul. He didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't let that detour him from his ultimate goal and focus. He learned to glory in his pain and his weakness without retaining in his soul blame and bitterness towards God and others. That's a beautiful thing. That is not easy. It is not simple. Man, that's one of the hardest things to do. To be able to persevere and not be bitter towards people and be bitter towards God, but to be focused on the mission. Beautiful. Second Corinthians 12, verse 7, he said, because of all these surpassing great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, it's like on top of all this, he's like, okay, I got these great revelations. God's blessing me with insight and wisdom about what I'm going through and, and I'm pushing through it. I'm going through all these hard external circumstances. But then he goes on and says, not only do I got to deal with external circumstances, guess what? He says, to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. Paul knew that God called him. Paul knew that God spoke to him. Paul knew that God loved him and had a plan for his life. Paul knew all this stuff. And because of that, he realized that his pain and his weakness had a divine purpose. And he didn't get distracted, which was to keep him from exalting himself. You know, the root meaning of humility is to know your place. To not think that you're less than who you are, but to also not think that you're greater than who you are, but to know exactly who you are. That's humility. Oh, I'm the worst scum of the earth. That ain't humility. Oh, uh, you know, I'm the best. I'm, I'm the greatest. That ain't humility. I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not. That is humility, knowing your place. You know, the root meaning of pride is to think that you are better than or less than who you really are. So insecurity is pride. Just as much as overly exalting yourself is pride, right? And so Paul, to Paul, this thorn was to remind him who he really is. This thorn reminds me of my limitations. This thorn reminds me that I'm not all that in a bag of chips, right? In the midst of all these great things I'm doing, this thorn reminds me of our limitations. Listen, this pandemic is a thorn for all of us right now. This thorn is reminding us that we aren't invincible. This thorn is reminding us that we are fragile. This thorn of this pandemic is reminding us that we're not all that we thought we were. This invisible enemy could take out any one of us and could use us to take out other people. It's terrifying. And so, man, we got to ask ourselves, what is this thorn producing in us? It's definitely exposing some stuff. This thorn reminds me from Paul's perspective that my spiritual 
successes, with all that, regardless of all my spiritual successes, I am spiritually bankrupt without God. Spiritually bankrupt without God. A man like Paul knew his limitations. And here's the thing. If Paul didn't have those limitations, guess what? He would be just another Pharisee. He would be just another Pharisee. And that's the benefit of pain and weakness, man. It reminds us of our limitations. And we have to make sure, are we aware of that? Not afraid of our limitations, not afraid of our weaknesses, not letting this stuff put us in a state of fear. Oh, I could die. You could have always died. Regardless of the pandemic, could have been a perfect day, no pandemic, you walk across the street, and that's it. We're fragile. We need to own this. We need to see these limitations, but then it does. we got to find God in the midst of it. Amen. You can do this. Amen. You can do that. You got all these abilities, but guess what? Without God, you're spiritually bankrupt. And that's why we need to make sure we're confessing our pain and our weakness, especially as disciples, so that we don't become Pharisees. That's why I shared in the message last week. Be real about your emotions. Be real about where you're at. Stop fronting for the grand, like everything's perfect, or for whoever you're trying to front in front of. I'm the Christian. I'm no, nah, man, we struggle. It's hard. It's hard to keep faith. It's hard to, to, to see God in some of this stuff. And, and that's fine. You're having a difficult moment. Don't forget who God is. Don't forget God's calling in your life. Don't forget that he has a purpose and a plan for you that's greater than this moment. Thorns keep us humble. You know, I used to, I talked to Mercer. I remember I said this. I was like, man, you know, me and LeBron James was born on the same day, same year. You know, if I wasn't so injury prone, I'd be LeBron James. I'd be probably one of the greatest athletes to ever walk this earth. But I'm injury prone. These injuries keep me humble, right? We all should think about this, right? We've been given these limitations. We've been exposing these, the life's been exposing these realities. Does that bring God down? Does that make God any less than who he was? You know, scholars say that, uh, you know, trying to examine what was Paul's thorn. Scholars say, you know, that it was spiritual temptations, you know, worldly, fleshly temptations. It was relentless opposition. That was his thorn. It was persecution. Some say they say it was a physical deformity, you know, was his was his thorn. Some say it was epilepsy, migraines, eye trouble. He had a hunchback, throbbing head pain. And I'm like, man, I don't want anyone to speculate. That's some bad stuff to speculate about the poor man, right? Hunchback, migraines, all these things. They're like, this is what his thorn was. But the real answer is this. And I must take a line from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It doesn't matter what the thorn was. That's the wrong perspective, the wrong thing we focus on. What was it, a migraine? Was it, was it a deformity? No. What we need to focus on is this. Paul said it was a messenger from Satan, which means Satan used it to cause the apostle to run from or doubt his calling. That's what's important. And so we want to ask ourselves, well, what is the thing that is causing me or that tempts me to run away from or doubt the calling that God has given me? That's important. Don't matter what it is. We all got different thorns. But that's the thing. We all have a thorn. Like I said before, this pandemic can be a thorn. Is it pulling me away from God or pushing me closer to God? That's what we have to ask ourselves. We all have pain. Is it pulling me away from God or is it pushing me closer towards God? We all have weaknesses. And are those weaknesses making us more dependent on God or is it making us rely more on something else other than God? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. Satan tried to wear him down through all the trials and all the tribulations and all the difficult circumstances, but God was lifting him up through his humility consistently. James 4 verse 10 says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Church, we need to make sure we are humbling ourselves in the sight of the Lord during these times. Don't think of ourselves as greater than we are, man. We are all flawed, every last one of us. All of us. Me, Johnny, Tommy, 
especially Johnny, Kai, like you're all flawed. We all are messed up. You, either you a minister or whoever you are. We're flawed. We're weak. We need to humble ourselves. Verse 8, it's funny. He says that he begged God to take away the storm. He begged God three times. And what did God say? All three times. No, no, and no. No. But he offered him something else. He offered him something better. He offered him his grace. And that's the beautiful thing. Verse 9, it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. This is a reality check, and some people might struggle with me for saying this, but it's real. It's not always God's will that you're going to be healed. It's not always God's will that you're going to be healed. It's not always God's plan to, re to relieve the pressure that you're under. That's not always God's plan. I know we want that. I know we pray for that, but that ain't always it. That's not always his will. One of the most dangerously misquoted scriptures, misquoted scriptures, is when people say, God will not give you more than you can handle. That's not what the Bible says. You know, reality is this. Can you handle the loss of a child? Can you handle watching loved ones suffer? Can you handle not being able to provide for your family? Can you handle dying on a cross? You know, we look at the we look at Jesus, even Jesus begged God to relieve that, to remove that, to find another way. But he trusted God and relied on him to give him strength. That's what he did. His pain, his trials, his thorn pushed him to God. Pushed him to God. The scripture says tempted AKA tested, which means that you will go through things and they will be hard things. The question is not, can you handle it? That's not the question. The question is, will you go to God with it? And that's the question. In the midst of these difficult times that we find ourselves in, are we going to God with it? Not can you handle it? That ain't about what can you handle, you're weak. You're weak in your own strength. No, you can't. But you go to God with it. You take it to God. The question is, will you go to God with it? And then will you trust and obey God through it? Will you trust and obey God through it? Jesus couldn't. He didn't want it. He was like, I don't want this. This isn't what I want. God, remove this. Let's have another way. But he trusted God. He trusted God. He gave it to God. He trusted God and obeyed God through it. And because of that, we are worshiping God 2020 today, right now, because of that. And we're taking our communion because of that. The Passion Translation says this, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. It says, we all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity, the severity, nature, and timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust him more than before. For along with every trial, God has provided a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously. God's goal in our lives is not for everyone to live a comfortable life. God's goal in our lives is to become, for us to become more faithful, more trusting, more obedient to his will. That's God's will for our lives. Did Paul get the answer that he prayed for? No, no. But remembering that God is forming us into the image of his son helps us to understand that God has a long-term plan for our lives. This will pass. This will pass. Who are we going to be when it passes? 
That's the question. He's not offering immediate relief because he has a long-term plan. And in the midst of all this that we're going through, God says this, my grace, my, my grace is sufficient. It's hard. My grace is sufficient. It's difficult. My God, I got you. My grace is sufficient. You're going to be okay. Just hold on. Just hold on. Trust me. I have a long-term plan. Hold on. Don't let go. His grace gives us more than we need to endure whatever threatens to undo us. His grace gives us way more than we need to endure whatever threatens to undo us. And we got to lean on his grace. It's more sufficient than your strength. His grace is sufficient enough to carry you through whatever unique thorn that you might be going through. It might not be the pandemic. It might be your marriage. It might be your children. It might be your finances. It might be, I don't know what it is. We all got a unique thorn that we got to deal with, regardless of what it is. The question is, what is it called? What is it creating in us? What is it causing us to run to? That's what we have to ask ourselves. My power is made perfect in weakness, God says. We are told that our achievements make us strong. Yes, physical and fleshly achievements are something to be proud of, but that doesn't make us strong. Self-sufficient and independent, that makes us. The painful thorns make us weak, man. Success, it, 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 it distracts us. Distracts us. It's the thorns where God is able to pour his strength into us and to give us an entirely new perspective on pain, on suffering, on hardship, on pressure, on disappointment, on hurts. Those are the things that drive us to our knees, church. That drive us to our knees. And that's where God can show up and show off. Suffering is about It's not about identifying the cause. It's about focusing on the response, focusing on who's going to bring the response. And that comes from Jesus. We got to make sure we don't get distracted, you know. And so the big question is like, okay, when are we able and how are we going to be able to do this? You know, when we see this and we understand God's role in the midst of all this, it allows us to know our place and live out our role. Once we're able to trust God with the thorn, trust God with the pain, trust God with the circumstance, then it's like, okay, God, you got this. Who am I to be right now? What do you need from me? How can I live this life right now to glorify and bring honor to you? To show that the the risen that, that Christ is not dead, but he's living and he's alive and well in me. How what do I do to be the light and the salt of this earth? Right? I was so inspired by the Mercer Church this past uh, Easter Sunday. You know, we went out and we're like, it's Easter. We're going to go do a Jericho prayer around one of the hospitals here in our area, uh, the ER area. We went around. We had a few cars, a bunch of cars came together, about seven, eight cars uh, of people came. And we just drove around the hospital and we had a WebEx call and people called in. And we all took turns praying. Each car, and even for the members that weren't able to be there, they called in and they prayed. And the prayer was powerful. Where we came together, we're like, yeah, it's Easter Sunday. We're not going to just, we, we, we got to figure out, what we got to bring this to God. What can we do to bring a light? We practiced social distancing, but we went out and we prayed. We prayed. Because pain brings you to your knees. It reminds you that God is the deliverer. And that God is working through this. And not only did we pray, but then that Monday, the men took a collection where we could provide a lunch for the doctors that are there at the hospital in Trenton. You know, and and, uh, the the resident workers there. And so we provided a lunch, a Jamaican lunch. You know, they had Jamaican music playing in 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 the room when they had their lunch together, you know, and they were so encouraged. We got an email back from them thanking the church for serving them like that. Man, there are ways that we can be a light to this world, to our community. I'm so grateful for Horatio and the work that they're putting in with the I Was Hungry program uh, and, and how they're just feeding people throughout our brothers and throughout the world. There's so much that you can do. 
when you put the pain and the circumstances in the hands of God and you focus on what he called you to do so we could remain and hold on to the peace of God. And my encouragement to you all is this. In order to grab hold of the peace of God, sometimes we need to do this. You know, our devices, our, our phones, they have these things. I know Android phones do. I don't know about iPhones, right? But Android phones, they have this button on the side. And if you press that button, you hold it long enough, it'll say power off. And you slide it over and it powers off the device. It's incredible. And you know what that does for people? It removes that anxiety that that device could create. You know what? Your television has this remote and on it is a button at the top or maybe in the center. And it says power. You press that, powers it off. And you know what? Sometimes we need to do that because our phones carry the opinions of the world in our hands. We got the whole world's opinions in our hands. And when we are looking at all their opinions, it's creating in us an anxiety. And God's like, I want to give you peace. I want to give you rest. But you need to put that thing down because you're filling up with the opinions of everyone else and you're not filling up with my peace. I can't even fill you with my peace because you already full with opinions. You need to empty that. You need to cut it off. The Cunningham family, I cut that bad boy off. No calls, no talks. I'm done at a certain time. I need my peace. I need peace of God because I'm called to do something. I can't, I can't be distracted. It's bad. Things are dark. Times are hard. Amen. But you're called for something still. Matter of fact, it's through these times where we shine the brightest. Please, don't forget your calling. Don't forget your calling. To God be the glory. Let's go ahead and pray for our communion. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to reflect on the Apostle Paul's life, his perseverance, his ability to see great things happen uh, regardless of his circumstances. God, I pray that you give us strength right now, that you allow us to be the men and women you called us to be, the light of the world, the salt of this nation. I pray, Lord, that you uh, that you bless the communion today, uh, that we remember your death, burial, and resurrection. And as we take this communion, we are inspired to live out the life of a risen Savior, that they could see that you left the tomb and that you are alive and well in us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
There is none holy as the Lord. There is none besides thee. Neither is there anyone like our God. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none. There is none holy as the Lord. Forever, 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 I will praise Him. Forever. 